Ati, have you thought of all the things that you can do with empty old metallic Coke cans? What if I told you that you can actually make pots and pans out of them? Well, Joy, that sounds wild, but it's true. In Sierra Leone, that's exactly what they are doing. Some clever folks are collecting old cans and re-engineering them. Let's have a look at how they are doing their bit for the environment. Did you know that you can turn old soda cans into cooking pots? Many African countries lack waste management systems. Therefore, most of the trash ends up at the roadside. In Sierra Leone, many people make a living from it. They collect soda and spray cans and turn them into durable aluminium cooking pots. The aluminium is melted in a clay furnace. After that, the molten metal is cast in a clay form. After cooling, the pot needs a little bit of filing, then it's ready for sale. Remelting requires much less energy than producing aluminium from ore. That's why recycling benefits the environment and saves natural resources. Do you like that? If you are also doing your bit, tell us about it. Visit our website or send us a tweet. Recycling is exactly how Bill Kiss Adebia Biola, a Nigerian social entrepreneur, started years ago to grow a successful business. Now, it's not just a business that has grown. She and her team have also helped to grow awareness amongst the people as it concerns waste management. The people now know that their waste can earn them some rewards. It's a new day for the wee cyclers in Lagos. Using low-cost cargo bikes, the organization collects the trash that's been gathered by the local residents. Not much of the waste in this city of about 18 million people is collected. That can encourage the spread of diseases. The trash clogs drainages, causing flooding. All of that could be prevented by recycling, says Billy Kis Abiola. She's the CEO of WeCyclers. It's going to prevent waste products from going into the waterways. It's going to prevent people from burning waste and leading to asthma. It's going to prevent so many chemicals from the recyclable waste entering into our soil and into our food. It's going to protect us because by recycling we're protecting our environment, we're reducing our consumption of energy, and we're promoting a con conservation of our natural resources. Volunteers go from door to door to motivate local residents to join in. Those who sign up receive collection reminders on their mobile phones and participation pays off. For every kilogram of plastic bottles, paper or aluminum cans, the residents receive recycler points. The points can then be redeemed for cell phone minutes, food or household items. Mama Dada, as she likes to be called, is happy to be part of the program. Since she joined, she's gotten a gas cooking stove and even a TV. I'm keeping Lagos clean because I don't want Lagos to be dirty. If you move out to other countries, even to Porto Novo down here, if you go there, you can't see any rubbish, not as much as in Nigeria. So that's why I'm trying to keep my father's land clean. In the recycling facilities, the trash is sorted and sold to recycling companies. By turning the waste into wealth, Biliki Sabiola hopes to fuel social change in low-income communities and help to create a cleaner environment. People will not dump waste indiscriminately in the canals. They know that they must keep the waste and get it recycled to protect Lagos State and make Lagos State better because it's everybody's responsibility to make Lagos State better. We all need to do our bit by recycling, by sorting our waste, and even telling other people to recycle. 
And it seems that some Lagos residents have caught the bug in the hope of making the Nigerian metropolis a little cleaner. Up until now, we cyclists had reached about 15,000 households in Lagos. But the organization is expanding into other areas, so that number is set to grow. Whether in Africa or in Europe, if any single material dominated the 20th century, it was plastic. It's light, durable, chemically resistant and easy to manufacture. Its advantages are obvious, but there is a major downside to that very durability. Plastic is not biodegradable. Instead, it breaks down very slowly into tiny bits, and that's a huge problem. This is the Rhine River in the Swiss city of Basel. Environmental scientist Thomas Mani and his colleagues from the university are taking water samples to establish just how polluted the river is with small plastic particles, known to scientists simply as microplastics. You can't see them, but they're there, and they're a growing menace to the environment and its inhabitants. And they last for ages. <laughs> The trouble is that plastic takes an extremely long time to biodegrade, hundreds or even thousands of years. More and more plastic is being manufactured, and a lot continues to find its way into nature. That's what sets this problem apart from other environmental contaminants. The team has already taken lots of samples from the Rhine, and the numbers are scary. At the surface, they found an average of close to one million particles per square kilometer. And they've worked out that the Rhine discharges 191 million microplastics particles towards the North Sea every day. This means the Rhine has some of the world's highest measured concentrations of these particles. Professor Patricia Holm is leading the study. She says microplastics are entering the environment in large volumes from a wide range of sources, but the dangers are not widely appreciated. When people see plastic bottles or seals strangled by fishing nets they swim into, then they do something about it. But these particles are so tiny, they tend to get overlooked. Thomas Mani analyzes the samples from the Rhine. First, he sifts the soup from the river three times through ever finer sieves. He then adds enzymes and hydrogen peroxide, which dissolve the organic material, but not the plastic. The tiny particles he's looking for are five millimeters or less in diameter. Once most of the organic material has been removed, he analyzes samples under the microscope. He counts the tiny pieces of plastic and calculates how much microplastic per square kilometer is swirling at the surface of the Rhine. This sample from the German-Dutch border indicates a concentration of well over three million particles per square kilometer. So where does all this plastic come from? Firstly, many microscopic particles are actually made that way. They're used in lots of personal care products and in manufacturing all kinds of products. Then there are fibers that are shed when you wash clothes made from synthetics, as well as fragments from everyday items that get into wastewater or directly into the river. There hasn't yet been much research on the dangers microplastics represent for animals. Here in Basel, they're investigating how much microplastic can be found in the fish in the Rhine. Once the particles with their baggage of toxins make their way into the food chain, into shellfish and fish, they can also end up on our dinner plates.